When I saw this, I was like, yeah, yeah, Rubik's Coach Cube. What? What is this? You peel the stickers? We're solving quicker with sticker peeling now. And get this, peel to reveal. You guys think you're clever? I've been gone for like a couple months and suddenly this is what we have? Well, I still paid for it with my own money, so who's laughing now? Wait, 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 solve in eight steps. Cross, first layer, second layer. And there should be four steps for the last layer. I did eight steps. Peel the stickers is step one. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all just packaging. Okay, okay, I'm warming up to this. It doesn't look so bad. I like that it's, it's so shiny. I don't even want to peel the stickers off. Wait a minute, I recognize this setup. Here we go. Hope you can read English. All right, there's a video online. You know what, scan the QR code if you want. Actually, don't, stay on the video. I knew it, the daisy. When I made my beginner tutorial, I thought about including the daisy, but I didn't because I think it's unnecessary and most people can understand the cross if you teach it properly, but I, I get it, the daisy is a little easier. The first thing we're supposed to do is peel off the one stickers for the cross and there's the one center right here, which means these must be all the white pieces, which means the daisy's already done. They just skipped step one for me, but anyway, I'm not worried about that. I'm going to just solve this now. I think that's way more fun than trying to do what they want me to do. Okay, well, I know the daisy is completed, so let's just start. We're gonna move all those pieces into the cross like that. So there's my cross. Oh, do I need to orient them properly? Um, like that? Okay, and then, wait, wait, they're all too, wait. This is by step, this is not by color, this is not solvable, ugh. All right, well, here I was trying to have a fun time and Rubik's won't let me. Actually, I'm gonna need this because they can't stop me. Let's just ignore every lockup and say that was a good solve. Anyway, let's get back to this. I need to get back in the mind of a beginner. The only way I could solve a Rubik's Cube is by peeling the stickers off. Oh, here we go, here we go. I don't like having to peel stickers off, it just feels wrong, but I'm making it a stickerless cube, which is better. Yeah, this center sticker just doesn't even fit. That's so unnatural. Oh, I thought I made a mistake. That is a one. Okay, so we have to see the daisy on step one. That makes sense. Okay, well, now that the daisy is completed, but I thought I just did it, I think that means the cube was just solved at the start, which makes a lot of sense, but we're gonna, we're gonna scramble it up here. Ooh, it's a bit weird to turn, but it actually is good. Like, wait, let's test the corner cutting. Oh, look, it corner cuts a little bit. That's good for a Rubik's brand. Reverse corner cutting? Wow actually a good cube to start with. I mean, not amazing, but something that you're forgiven for not turning perfectly. So the way that I teach the Rubik's Cube is that the two sticker would already be revealed here because you're gonna solve each cross piece one by one based on the centers. And the way that they wanna teach it is by doing the daisy like this. And then this way you can very easily match up the centers to throw onto the other side. And I think another really good thing about this whole sticker peeling thing wow, I never thought I'd say that, is that because you've only peeled off one, this forces you to know where the white edge pieces are for the cross. Versus on a normal Rubik's Cube, you might see this and this and think they're both white, but not realize that one's a corner and one's a, an edge piece. Well, like, it's easy to tell the difference, but as you're going through solving, it may confuse you when you see a bunch of white corner pieces. Oh, this is some good stuff right here. So they tell you to find the first white piece, and then it could be on the front left, it could be on the front right. Flip the page. It could be on the front top, front bottom, or bottom front. That covers all the cases. That is amazing. It tells you how to solve every single one of these cases for the daisy. When I was teaching how to solve the cross, if you found a piece like over here, I would just tell you to take it down, move it, and fix any cross pieces you broke, which I guess is more intuitive. You understand the cube a bit more by doing that, but it is more difficult. All right, now we're gonna peel off all the two stickers. Gotta make sure I find all of them. I shouldn't have cut my nails. I cut my nails before cubing, but this was a bad time. So we have all of the centers revealed now and the other color of each edge piece. Yeah, and there's just adhesive, there's like glue stuff everywhere. Maybe it's to help the steps stick better in your brain, haha, <laughs> get it? So if you didn't learn the cross with the daisy, the reason that this gets taught at all is because the first step, you don't have to line the colors up on the side correctly, so you don't have to think about an edge piece as two different colors and just one instead. And then on the next step, you just line it up to the center, turn it 180 degrees. 
line this one up here, turn it, line this one, turn it, turn it, and there's the cross. So you still have to learn how to put the white pieces on all the same side, but then the step afterwards is super easy. I'm looking at step three and I'm already not liking it. What is this three move trigger? Where's the sexy move? Oh my goodness, I have four corners and three stickers on each corner. I need to peel off 12 different stickers. Oh, that took way too long. And I'm putting myself in the mind of a beginner. I'm already scared by this. There are so many more colors now I have to deal with. In the instructions, they teach R, U, R prime as the right trigger, and they teach L prime, U prime, L as the left trigger. Now, in my video, I taught these as the four moves instead of the three moves. So instead of this, I taught it as one, two, three, four. And there are a lot of reasons why I taught it as four moves. But first of all, the way that they want you to solve this case, let's put it on top of orange and blue, is you do the right trigger, right? If it's on the right side, the white. But if it's on the left side, you do the left trigger. And that's all good. But then if it's on top, what they want you to do is the right trigger twice and then now it's on the side and then now you can do the right trigger normally which is very interesting because it seems like before they were just going for the easiest thing possible but then now what they're doing is just a bunch of extra steps when really you could have just taught one two three four and then just repeat that as necessary i thought they did a great job with the daisy i don't know why this step suddenly got a little bit harder but let's just complete the first layer all right this part's my nightmare Ugh, one down, eight to go. Okay, I am back to loving this. This is great. Instead of teaching the entire second layer thing as an algorithm, they teach it to you as one trigger followed by solve the corner. And it's pretty much the same thing I taught. Basically what they say is if the blue red needs to go to the right side, then you start by pushing this away. The way that I taught is if it goes to the right side, you push with your right hand. You know, I'm trying to teach finger tricks at the same time, but obviously they don't have the same goal. I want people to become a speed cuber. Learn how to solve a Rubik's cube to watch 400 of my videos pipeline. But I respect it if they just want you to solve the cube and buy their products. So then you do the right trigger and then they tell you to solve this corner the way that you would before, which is with the left trigger. And then that works. Same algorithm that I taught. You know, what's interesting though, the more I think about it, just going back in time, if I could have changed how it, I've done it, I might have done it differently. I might have taught instead of the regular, uh, what's called sexy move, I would have done the reverse, which looks like this, because that pairs it up. Then you just go over here and do the left-hand version. And I think that's much simpler because instead of thinking about it as three different steps, it's just two different steps. Okay, and again, we're just going to speed through the rest of the second layer. I mean, for a beginner, this has to feel so satisfying when the rest is just blacked out and it looks like you finished everything. Now for the last layer across, I'm pretty sure every tutorial teaches it the exact same way. You do this and then you do that and then you do that. However, the way that they group it groups these three moves. So there's that extra move at the end. And again, like, why didn't you just teach it as a trigger of four moves? I don't know. And here is where they start to take a different route from what I taught and what a lot of people learned, which is they start to teach OLL and PLL. Obviously not the whole thing, just one algorithm for each. But you can see by step six, which is the one we have next. Oh, that could be nine, I guess. There's only eight steps. Um, by step six, you can see that we have all of these that are going to be uncovered. But the way that I would teach it next is you uncover these ones to line up the top cross. And I actually like teaching it that way better because what that means is you do a similar step to what you do at the beginning, which feels familiar, so it's easier to remember. And also the two algorithms that come afterwards are this and this. Now, first of all, this one's very easy to remember. You can remember it as a pattern. And then the final step is just the main trigger again. So like, I don't know why it's not being taught that way. Maybe because OLL and PLL is what we usually do. So it's easier to transition later on. In my opinion, just make it as easy as it can be from the start. Because if someone quits at the start because they don't think they can do it, they're never gonna make it to the advanced part anyway. And so here's why I don't like that they teach OLL, PLL afterwards. You can see here, there's a lot of rules for what to do depending on where the yellow is. So you have to memorize all this and then memorize the algorithm. I teach this algorithm too, so that part's fine. And then when we try to permute the corners, it's gonna be another algorithm. And then when we permute the edges, 
it's another algorithm and each one is just completely new stuff. Like you don't use any of your previous triggers. There's no, not really a pattern to it. You just do it. And in my opinion, this stuff is stuff you have to write down and know the notation. It's really hard to remember if you don't cube a lot as a beginner. And I don't know how many of you remember, but in my beginner video, I made a point not to teach any notation because I think if you don't need to write anything down and you don't need notation, then it's gonna be easier to memorize it. But that's not to say I'm right and they're wrong. If you literally have a book in front of you and you have to make sure people never mess it up and it's hard to explain that much because no one wants to read all this, then yeah, notation, <laughs> notation's very good. I'm so glad that we just got the standard case where it solves immediately to yellow top because for the other cases, I actually don't know how to do it. I would have had to read the book. Next up, we are permuting the corners. These two are wrong, these two are right, and we put it on the right face and we do this crazy algorithm because I guess they only taught notation for left, front, right, and then up. So like this is, it's just, if you rotate, it's just an A perm, it's really fast. But instead we are, oops, this cube, we are doing it like this. Oh, wait, yeah, 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 like, like that. I couldn't even figure it out. And finally, permute the edges, put the solve one at the back, and do the algorithm that they say. I'm not gonna do it, I can't memorize that. You, you know what's really funny about this? If I taught it, I almost would really want to teach the M move version because it is so easy. It is so much simpler and easier to memorize than any other algorithm, but for some reason, there's this thing against teaching beginners M moves. And I don't know, there might be a good reason for that. I, I don't know, it might just be confusing. But like, memorize that versus memorize this? Mm-mm, M moves way easier. And other than being easy, it's also really fast. Stole the one I used. But is this cube any good? It definitely locks up a little bit. I don't even know if it's customizable. Can we take a center cap out? I feel like it's glued. Anyway, the only thing I really would have wanted with this is a little plastic thing that can get under the stickers and scrape it because I am destroying my nails by doing that and it was a lot of effort. Okay, let's do a complete solve so we can see how fast you could get with the Coach Cube. It is, ah, uh, this sticky stuff everywhere. It's a decent cube, pretty good for beginners. You'll learn how to turn accurately. It's just the corner cutting is not really there and obviously it's not magnetic. When is Rubik's gonna make a magnetic beginner cube? Anyway, let's start with the beginner method that they taught in the book. I'm doing this completely by the book, and if you don't use the beginner's method or you're slower than this, you should be embarrassed. All right, let's go. Here is the daisy, and then this one. Uh oh, they're all lined up, very lucky. Uh, this corner goes here. This one, they do it like this, and then this, and then they put it in normally. Uh, here we have this red green, this green orange. Uh, this one. We move it away, do the right trigger, solve this like the left one. This one goes to the left, so we move it away, left trigger, put it in here, oh, there's a lot of talking, and then this one <laughs> like that, and like that, and then this one like that, like that. Uh, get the top cross, uh, what was the next step? Oh yeah, 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 um, you do the soon algorithm, and then you do it from here, even though that's horrible, I think that's what they said to do, there we go. And then we solve the corners, this on the right side, do their algorithm, uh, put this at the back, and then their algorithm was like, sub one minute, let's go. We're gonna do one more solve here, and it's just gonna be a regular speed solve. If you stuck on the coach cube forever, except you're actually used to it, unlike me, how fast could you get with this? Jeez. Oh, this is so weird to use. Uh, I'm not happy with that. Okay, let's not turn too crazy with this. Clearly, it's not that good. I just need to turn safe and not mess anything up. Dude. <laughs> I was like, no way I'm getting a PLL skip on this thing. I got an, I, I got a 10, that's a plus two. So do I recommend the Coach Cube? It's not a great cube, but it's just meant to teach you how to solve the Rubik's Cube. And I'm glad, I'm so glad they included a full book with everything in it because this, 
This, I promise you, is going to be useless someday. Rubik's Brand is notorious for making online guides that they just delete after they decide this product's done. We don't want it anymore. The, the website will not support it. But this book, as long as you're not lazy, as long as you read the words here and follow the instructions properly, you will solve the cube and it will not be that hard. Try a different challenge. Speed. Oh, I already have that one. Race? Everything's about race these days. Oh, Phantom, I don't have that one. I think I'm gonna try that one. 